the entire memory space is divided into number of parts or we say is a partition it allocates the process to the partition which is large sufficient free available partition in the main memory so what is the use of computer memory is a memory is used in computer to store data information and different programs paging is used for faster access to data and it is a logical concept dear students welcome to bca classes i am ravi kumar kr lecturer in computer science vidyasham pu college temple of excellence mysore students let us start our discussion with the chapter memory management now in this session we are going to cover the topic logical and physical address space swapping and paging we are going to learn different definitions of these concepts now let us see what is a memory management as we have seen in the unit 1 and the first session about functions of operating system so one of the function of operating system is memory management so what is a memory management you know what is a memory so what is the use of computer memory is a memory is used in computer to store data information and different programs so here let us see what is the process so it is a process so memory management is a process of controlling and coordinating the computer memory so what is the memory management it is a process of controlling and coordinating computer memory and assigning portions known as blocks to various running programs to optimize the overall performance of the computer system or the memory of the computers so the memory management is a process is going to controlling and coordinating the computer space so here so that it optimize the performance of computer system so that is the definition of what is memory management now let us see what are different techniques or technology here so memory management techniques one is single continuous allocation so here it is the easiest memory management technique in this method all types of computers memory except a small portions which is reserved for the os is available for one application so what is the meaning of this in this method in this technique all the programs all the data programs information and even including operating system will be stored in a computer memory in a in continuous allocation means here the even the operating system itself the operating system it is it will be stored in the main computer memory so in a in continuous order in a definite order or with rest with with the particular allocation space that is single continuous allocation example is ms dos you know ms dos microsoft disk operating system it is a, one example for an operating system it allocates memory in this way so ms dos is an example for single continuous memory allocation it means that everything will be stored in the computer memory at one place in a definite order or in its own physical address and here an embedded system also runs on a single application so this is one technique single continuous allocation next one is partition allocation so it divides the memory means this technique divides the memory into various memory partitions which most which is mostly continuous areas of memory every partition stores all the information for a specific task or a job this method consists of allotting a partition to a job when it starts and unallotted when the when it ends so what is the concept of partition memory here so this technique the entire computer memory is divided into number of parts we say number of partitions so a very good example you can observe in a computer system if you using windows operating system your entire hard disk suppose if you have around 1 gb of space of hard disk 
it, we are dividing into number of partition like C drive, D drive, E drive, that is called a partition. So here, the entire memory space is divided into number of parts, or we say it is a partition. And here, in all the partitions are, are divided, are divided in a definite order, and all the programs, as well as any applications, operating systems, will be stored in different partitions as, as it has been allotted. So and here, another important thing is that, so this method consists of allotting a partition for a job and when it starts and unallotted when the, it ends. It is a concept of partition allocation. So concept here is main memory is divided into number of parts or we divide into number of partitions so that all the partitions are used for storing data, information and different types of applications. Next one is called page memory management. Another technique is called page memory management. So this method divides the computer's main memory into fixed size units known as page frames. So here in this one, as we have seen in the previous example, it is a partition. Now here we are dividing the memory into fixed size units called page frames. So this hardware memory management unit maps pages into frames which should be allocated on the page basis. So here as the memory is divided into number of pages and again in the frame, so each and every job or the program information will be allotted to a particular page. This is page in memory management. Next one is segmented memory management. So here Segmented memory is the only memory management method that does not provide the user's program with a linear and continuous address space. So here, segments need hardware support in the form of segment table and it contains the physical address of the memory, size, space and other data like access protection, bits and status. So what is the segment memory uh, management? Here, the segment memory, so it is all the information are stored in different segments and in this concept, it is OS is going to maintain a segment table. So in the table, it is going to maintain the segment number or the physical address and what is which particular program will be allotted, which part of segments in the computer memory. So that is a concept of segmented memory. Next one is another technical term is swapping. So what is swapping? Swapping is a method in which the process should be swapped temporarily from the main memory to the backing store. So it will be later brought back into the memory for continue execution. So you know what is a process in programming concept? or with respect to operating system, process is nothing but a program in execution. So here any program in execution, it will be temporarily brought, it will be loaded from the computer memory. So what is swapping here is, swapping is the process, here it should be swapped temporarily from main memory to back store for some other reason and after its time, it is going to bring back to the main memory for execution. That particular process will be bring back to the main memory for execution. That is the definition of swapping. That is the definition of swapping. So here, backing store. So backing store is a hard disk or some other secondary storage devices. So here, what you have seen here, backing store. From main memory to secondary memory devices or backing store that should be big enough in order to accommodate copies of all the memory images for all the users. And it is also capable of offering direct access to these memory images. So here, this is the definition of swapping and backing store. It is nothing but a hard disk or some other secondary memory devices. In the next slide, see this is called swapping. So this is operating system and user space and the process one. So process one, here, a process B1, it will be from here it is coming out, it's called swapping out, and this process will get into user space, it's called swapping, main memory and secondary memory devices. So this is called swapping. So once the swapping, 
So here, the part of the process will be uh, bring back to the storage devices for, for time being. Then after that, it will bring back to the main memory for execution. So this is swapping. In the next slide, what is memory allocation? So here, memory allocation is a process by which computer programs are assigned memory or space. Here, as we have seen in the memory management, so each and every program are a process. So here, the computer programs are assigned a memory location in the computer that is called memory allocation. So here, there are two types of partitions. One is low memory, means operating system resides in this type of memory and high memory user processes are held in high memory. So here there are two methods here. One is low memory and high memory. In low memory, the operating system will be loaded in the low memory and all other user programs or processes will be stored in high memory. So this is memory allocation. Next, partition allocation. So here memory is divided into different blocks or partition. That is what, what you have seen in our previous slides. Each process is allocated according to the requirement. So here, each process will be allocated a different part or partition of hard disk or computer memory. So here, partition allocation is an ideal method to avoid internal fragmentation. So instead of having all the data, information, everything in one location, it is better to have a partition so that uh, different programs can be allotted different partition for storage. This is partition allocation. Partition allocation schemes. Here first one is first fit. So here in this type, the partition is allocated which is first sufficient block from the beginning of the main memory. So it is going to store the information from the beginning of the memory. That is called first fit. Next one is best fit. This is second scheme. It allocates the process to the partition that is the first smallest partition among the free partition. So here, I mean, it is possible to have partitions of different size. So accordingly, here the processes allotted to a smallest partition that is best fit. Next, worst fit. So here, it allocates the process to the partition, which is large, sufficient, free available partition in the main memory. So this is another a type of a scheme, worst fit. Here, the processes are allocated another partition which has enough space. Next one is next fit. It is a mostly similar to the first fit, but in this fit, searches for the first sufficient partition from the last allocation point. So these are the different schemes of partition allocation schemes. Now in the next slide, see what is paging here. So as we have seen in the previous slide, the definition paging is a storage mechanism that allows OS to retrieve processes from the secondary storage into the main memory from the pages. As we have seen in the previous slide, definition is the memory itself is divided into number of pages with definite frame size. So accordingly, so it is the information is a mechanism, I mean that allow OS to retrieve the process from the secondary memory into the main memory for processing or for execution. In the paging method, the main memory is divided into small fixed size blocks of physical memory, which is called frames. That's what I have told you just now. So the memory is divided into paging. And the paging is nothing but it will be having a phys it is a fixed size blocks called frame. So all the information will be stored within respective frames. The size of the frame should be kept the same as that of page to have maximum utilization of the main memory and to avoid external fragmentation. Paging is used for faster access to data and it is a logical concept. So what is paging here? It is the main memory is divided into number of partitions. Again, also it is divided into number of pages with fixed frame length or a block size that is called frames and information will be stored in 
each and every frames in the order. So, and what is the advantage of this? So, it is with the help of this, we can have a maximum utilization of computer main memory. That is the advantage of paging. In the next slide, and what is fragmentation? So, the processes are stored and removed from the memory, which creates the free memory space, which are too small to use by other process. So, please understand the concept here is, once the process has been executed or completed its execution, it has to be removed from the main memory. Once the process are removed, so it creates a free memory space and those space are too small for other processes to be stored in the memory that is called fragmentation. So after some time, the process is not able to allocate to memory blocks because it is small in size and memory blocks always remains unused is called fragmentation. So this is the concept of fragmentation here. The concept here is once the processes are executed or complete its execution, normally it will be removed from the computer memory or it releases from the resources. In that case, the space available in the memory, which it cannot be fit into any of the processes because of its size. In that situation, so here the memory blocks will be remain unused. That is called fragmentation. This type of problem happens during dynamic memory allocation and when free blocks are quite small and so it is not able to fulfill any request. So here in this situation, we cannot make use of the memory of the computer system effectively. That is a drawback of this fragmentation. In the next slide, what is segmentation? So segmentation method works almost similar to paging. And the only difference between the two is that segments are of variable length, whereas paging method have fixed size. So we have seen in the definition of paging here, it is has a number of fixed size frames. And here segments of variable length. And the program segment includes the program's main function, data structure, utility function, etc. The OS maintains a segment map table for all the process. It also includes a list of free memory blocks along with its size, segment number and so on. So this is also called as segment number and so on. So, so this is called segmentation. It is different from paging and it includes so many details about the processes. This is segmentation. Students, so far we have discussed about the concept memory management in with respect to operating system. In the next session, we are going to talk about the concept of virtual memory. Thank you very much.